Welcome to the Sunday podcast of the Prodigal Son. You know, we do this Sunday podcast for a reason. I want to make sure that you get fed with the Word of God. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. I want to talk to you today about something that is that's really close to my heart. And it's something that I've, I've taken this scripture to heart. And I talked about it a couple of weeks ago on Sunday morning at church, but I've taken this scripture to heart over the years, and, and I want to, I just want to read it. It's uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 18. It says, And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given, a, given to us the ministry of, of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. I want to talk to you today about something. I've said this for years, that we're not out of of people to preach to. We're not out of uh, places to preach we're out of time. We're out of time. This world is in such a wreck. You know, Pastor Bob talked about it a few weeks ago. This, uh, I, there's, 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 it's amazing how this world has just turned upside down in the last few years. It, we are out of time. We need to reach out to the world that we live in and proclaim to them that there has been a friendly relationship, a, 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 a sacrifice made to give them that friendly relationship with our Father, our Heavenly Father. And that sacrifice was Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You know, Mark 16, 15 says to go into all the world and preach the gospel, to proclaim the good news, to proclaim what God has done for this world. You know, I, I I heard a guy talk about it one time. He said he said he was going to he was in a third world country and was just riding in a car. They were they were taking him somewhere in a taxi and they said he rode through one of the worst places in in that in that country. And he said the thought just come to me, no hope. He said I looked around and and saw just poverty and and just just uh, just awful situations and in the people's lives that lived there. And and he said, hey, just the thought just come to me, no hope. Well, I'm going to proclaim to you today that there is hope. There is hope. And it's it, it, there's all kinds of promises of hope in this book. In this book that we can proclaim to this world to be true. You know, we, we look down, we look at, at the world that we live in today and I wonder sometimes, I wonder how they make it. You know, for the last hundred years, 80, 80 at the least years, all this world has ever seen out of most people, out of most people or most things in this world is religion. They've never been, been taught what we get taught on a regular basis at Church Alive. They never get taught that you can believe God's word regardless of what you see, that you can believe God's word regardless of man's opinions. Now, I visit a lot of churches. I've been to a lot of churches in the last few years, and, and I thank God that we've got a pastor and preachers that proclaim what thus say this, what thus saith the word at our church. And it goes out all over the, all over the world through our Facebook page. I want to encourage you, share these, these, these services. There's, I, I don't know how many there are on there, but there's got to be hundreds. There's two a week went out for, for a long time. But share them. Share them so the world can see and understand what we know, what we know. And that what we know is that we can count on God. We can count on what he has said you know, that man was talking about no hope. I'm going to proclaim to you today 
that there's there's more hope in this book than you can find in the world that we live in, in all the money in the world that you can that you can get get hold of and spend. You're going to find more in this book than you, than you could ever find in this world. God is for us. He wants us to succeed in our lives. You know why? He wants to bless us so we can be a blessing to the world around us. Because there's a lot of hurting people. There's a lot of people that don't know which way to turn. They don't know that they can count on God, that they can run to Him. Most people run away from God because they look at Him like like the religious world has has made him out to be like a like, like an unpleasable tyrant that cannot be pleased that ain't god that's religion that is what religion has made god out to be some unpleasable tyrant but jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel proclaim the good news people were out of time like I said, there'll always be people in this world to preach to, and there'll always be a place to preach. But we're out of time. We need to get about, go about the Father's business and reach out to the world that we live in, whether it be sharing these, these, these uh, Facebook Live videos or talking to your neighbor, talking to the guys at the grocery store at you, where you get gas at. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Taking every living moment that you live and looking for an opportunity to, to share Jesus. Because I promise you, this, this, this thing is going to quickly come to pass. Got one of these days, Jesus is going to step out on the clouds and call his church home. And then all hell's going to break loose on this earth. I've got people that I dearly love that I want to see them born again, that I want to see them come to know what I know. There's people that I know are born again that I want them to come to the knowledge of the truth, not man's tradition, not man's religion, but the truth. If you attend Church Alive, I told somebody this the other day, there's probably 30,000 people just within the vicinity, just out Mouse Creek Road, north and south from our church. We can touch hearts and lives. So we drive those roads every week. You know, we go, we're there every Sunday. We can be a light to them, be a help, be a strength to people that have no idea that 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 church is different than most churches in this town. I had no I I had no I had no idea. I told a man years ago when I left the church that I was attending ten years ago, or well no seven years ago. When I left it, I went to another church and 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 got fed for years there. But I told him, I said, listen. I said, I'm going to be honest with you. If I hadn't found a church that, that taught the word like Church Alive does, like, like this, this Facebook claim page proclaims every, every week, if I hadn't have found somebody that was feeding me, I'd have been backslid again like I was 10 years ago. But I found a place in God's kingdom that I could be fed. People, we attend a church that wants to feed the world and can. We can. Do you realize the power that we have in these things right here? You can, you can reach the world all over the world through that phone, through sharing these videos. Sunday morning, Wednesday night, share them. Get the word out of what Church Alive is doing in this community. 
There's over 100,000 people in this town. They, I mean, they've come in from everywhere, from all walks of life, from all the way on the other end of the, of the, of the nation, from California, Texas, Connecticut, all over. They need to know that there's more to God than just religion. Because like I told you, that's all a lot of people have ever seen in their life is religion. There's hope in this world. I promise you there's hope. And we need to let everybody know that we've been reconciled to God by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And he can give them that friendly relationship, that reconciliation has brought the born-again people of this world. There's, there's, there's saved people here that, that live in this town, born-again people that do not know that they can come boldly to God's throne. I, I, from, from, I, didn't go, I wasn't raised in church. I didn't come up as a, as a child in church. Me and my wife started going to church in our early 20s, got born again, started going to church, but we failed to understand what this book was saying. I scratched my head for years, scratched my head for years and think, thinking, good night, there's more, there's got to be more to this than I'm, than I'm understanding and reading in this book. There was tons more. You know what it all stemmed on? It stemmed on me taking what God had written down for me and believing it, not mixing a bunch of man's traditions, a bunch, bunch of religion in it, and saying, well, I don't believe it that way. Look here. Look here. I want you to understand something today. God don't care what we believe. He cares what he has said. And he will back what he has said up to the 10th degree. He will back it up when the world's on fire. He will stand, and prom I promise you, he will do exactly what his word has said. Numbers 23, 19 says, For God is not a man that he should lie. God ain't lied when he wrote this book. He didn't lie one bit when he wrote this book. He wants us to stand and proclaim that, that ministry of reconciliation that we have been given through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and proclaim it to the world. Proclaim the good news. You know, it's the good news, or it's the good things that bring, that, that cause men to, to draw to God, to repent. You know what I'm talking about? It's the goodness of God that lead men to repent. Not, not religion, not somebody um, condemning them and shaming them, scaring them. No, it's what God has done to be good to us and to love us. And to make, give us an understanding that he's for us. That's what God wants us to be proclaiming to the world, that he loves us. He cares for us. You know, years ago now, it's been six or seven years. I started this podcast in 18, but it was long before that when I started understanding just who God was. When I read Luke 15, you know, Haley talked about this, I think it was Sunday morning. When I come to realize what God was saying to, to me in Luke 15, the story of the prodigal son, that's the reason my podcast is named The Prodigal Son, because I come to understand that that father in that story was my heavenly father. And he wasn't, he wasn't going to hold one thing against me. If you'll notice in that story, that young man, he come up with a, a, a complete speech. He said, I'm going to go back and I'm going to tell him I've sinned against God and against him, or against him and against heaven and am no more worthy to be called by son. He said, and I'm prepared to be a, a hired servant. He said, the servants in my father's house have, have pl plenty to eat. And he said, he made all this up. And if you read 
Mark 11 or Mark or Luke 15, 11 through 24 and get a hold of what the father done. He let that young man come back and repent. He told the young man told the father, he said, listen, he said, I've sinned against you and against heaven and am no more worthy to be called thy son. And, and the father stopped him right there. He didn't tell, he didn't give him the opportunity to tell him that he wanted to be a servant. Why? Because he was a son. He was that father's son, and he wanted that young man to know it. He wanted him to know it. People, we've got a commission by, from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to go into all the world and proclaim the good news, to proclaim what he has done for us, what he has done to save us, to give us this ministry of reconciliation, that ministry that says God is for you. You can, you can have a friendly relationship with the one that you thought was out to get you. No, he reconciled us in Christ Jesus when Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And, and that thrills me to be able to tell people that. I sat at a, at a table today, two tables pushed together, probably 10 or 15 inmates, and we just rejoiced in what God has said, what, he's, what he has said to us, and what he will do for us if we just believe it. I feel like the Lord wants me to, to go to, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and the 11th verse. Hang on a minute. I can get to it quicker in my phone than I can my Bible. It says, now this is, this is Jeremiah 29 11. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. I want to I read what the New Living says. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans of good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. What's the Amplified Classic say? It says, For I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil, to give, give you hope in your final outcome. You remember what I talked about, that man talking about he looked and, and, and uh, saw no hope? I'm going to tell you something. God has done more than enough to give us what we need to go out into this world and proclaim the good news. This day and time, we have more resources to spread the gospel than ever before. Social media is, I'm talking about worldwide. I've had 67,000 downloads on my podcast, and they have touched every continent all over this planet. And that wasn't possible just a few years ago. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. I mean, just the list goes on and on of how we can spread the good news. Not to mention, just right here around the church, just right here in this community. There's, do you realize, I've, I've been to a bunch of churches here in this town in the last year, 18 months. And you wouldn't believe the the churches that are sitting uh, 25% full, some of them 10% full, just that just dried up on the vine. People are not going. I had a guy tell me when I first started my podcast, I talked to him and he was, uh, uh, he worked for a local Christian uh radio station, 103.1. 
And he told me, he said, we've come to understand and, and found, heard a lot of things about what had uh, their demographics. And he said, 85% of the people that listen to that radio station are unchurched. They don't go to church, but they, yet they listen, listen to Christian radio unchurched in a, a Bible Belt, you know, place. We're right at, we're the buckle of the Bible Belt, a lot of people says. But yet 85% of the people that listen to that radio station don't attend church. Why is that? I don't know. I have no idea. But I know one thing, that we can reach out to them and, and proclaim that ministry of reconciliation that we have been given, that good news that they can, they, can, they can know and have if we'll just get them in, get them into our church and get them fed, get them strengthened, not with, not, not with how good we are, but know how good God is. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. There's millions that don't know that he's good. They don't know that he loves them. All they've ever seen is a bunch of lying religion, a bunch of man's tradition. Man's traditions makes God's word of no effect. Why, that's the reason you don't see God working out here in the community anymore, because man's tradition has made it null and void. We need to change that. We need to take these little devices that every one of us has got one in their pocket and use them. Proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and what he has done. Proclaim to the world that he's good. It's the goodness of God that draws people in. I've said it on this on on this uh uh, Facebook Live and at church, I thank God that I've got a church that I feel like family at, that I come, that I enjoy going to. That it's not about you know just a certain group, but it's about all of us. They, we're cared for. We love each other. That's what God wants us to do out here in this world to show them the same thing to let them know that they're welcome. And not only do we love them, but God loves them, no matter where they're at in life. Because I promise you, I told them the other day, I said, listen to me, you got to be mentally handicapped not to know where you're at with God. I said, I'm not in here to try to change your mind or, or shame you into, into you know feeling bad because you're in jail. I said, that ain't my place. Billy Graham said it best. He says, God's part to judge, and it's the Holy Spirit's uh, place to convict. He said, it's my place to love, and that's exactly what he done. Known all over the world, never, never a scandal held against Billy Graham. And that is what we need to be doing to, for the world that we live in today, for the community that we live in. That, that God loves them and he cares for them. And he's going to use us as a conduit to project that love out here into the, the world that we live in. People, we've got a commission. We're, we're out of time. Like I say, you'll never be out of people to preach to or places to preach. What we're out of is time. And if we don't get at it, there's going to be a lot of people that dies without God. And, and I don't want to be one of those people that didn't do all that he could do to pro proclaim the good news all over this planet for the glory of God. Has nothing to do with me, but it has to do with what he has done, what he's willing to do, and what he will do in our lives if we'll allow him to. I promise you. God will save you. He'll, he'll change your life. I know I'm, I'm, a, I'm a walking testament to what God can really do when you believe him. When you believe what he, what, what he says in his word instead of a bunch of man's tradition. That's what, that's what caused me to get away from God years ago. 
It's been 22 years, 22 years since I walked away from a relationship with God. Ten years ago, I came back. Six or seven, almost going on seven years ago, I got a hold of what this right here really meant. I got a hold of that if you'll believe God's word above all opinion, it'll change your life. And it did. It did. I can look at my life today and I can say without a shadow of doubt, I'll never be the same. I promise you. And it's nothing because of what I've done. It's because of what he has done and said in his word that he's willing to back it up. Back it up. All I've got to do is believe it. There's millions out here that don't know that. Let's get about the Father's business. Let's see people born into the family of God. Let's see the ones that are born again taught that they can depend on what he says. I'm going to ask you to pray for a man that I contacted today. His wife is very sick. And I, I just gave him a little bit. I, want, I wanted him to, to know that I was for him and that God's word would carry him through. And you pray for this man. I'm not going to call his name. I just want you to know that his wife is, is sick. And she needs to understand and to know that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, her Lord and Savior, he healed her 2,000 years ago. Help me pray about that. Now, I'm going to ask you today. I, want, I do this every time I do anything on, on my podcast or for the church or anything. I want to ask you today, are you born again? Are you watching this video and you say, boy, I'd really like to know what it's like to have a, a true, strong relationship with God? Or if you are born again, you know, you've, you maybe spent your whole life doing like I did, scratching my head, thinking there's got to be more to this. And they are, they are, and it all comes out of his word. It all comes out of what God says and believe in it. But if you've never been born again, Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. He says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again, to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, to make him Lord of your life. Invite him in. Ask him to be Lord. Confess him and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. That's all it takes to be born again. It's easy. Religion's made it hard but it ain't. I promise you it ain't. And then get in God's word and find out who you are in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not in religion, not in man's tradition, not in a bunch of junk that, that, that's being spread all over this world as gospel. No. Believe on what God's word says and stand in it and watch him change your life. God will change your life today. Now, I want, to, I want to invite you to our church. Uh, you can go to this, this Facebook page and get the address. If, you're not, if you don't have a church home, come, and, come and, and visit. We've got a world-class worship team, and I want you to understand that you'll be loved and cared for and be preached to, fed, not with a bunch of tradition, but with God's Word. I trust that you've been fed today on this Sunday podcast. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do. If you've got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to send you God's word on that prayer request. I want you to get your answers for that prayer request from God's word, and I'm going to help you find them. I thank God for his word and the truth in it that we can stand on it and agree on it. And I'll send you what God says about that prayer request. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the 
prodigalson.com. Now listen, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you. Thank you for all that you do, sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his word away free of charge all over this planet. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you have sown into this ministry. Thank you, partners. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.